January 78th. Dear Diary, while questioning my sanity for the past two weeks of quarantine, the only thing I can do is to stay focused. Wait. I lived in Japan for five years. Wonder if I ever got close to being murdered. Edit. So I did some research about unsolved murder cases from Japanese sources, cause I like to make my own life harder than it should be. Heck, why not? Let's make a video out of this crap. This is the unsolved case of the Bracken Picking Housewives. On May 25th, 1979, at approximately 10.30 a.m., two bodies were discovered in the mountain area of Nagaoka Kyo City, Japan. The deceased in question were two housewives, the 32-year-old Mizuno Keiko and the 43-year-old Akashi Eiko. Both women worked part-time at the local Izumiya supermarket, and after finishing their shift on May 23rd, around 10 a.m., they cycled towards the nearby mountain to have lunch and pick up some brackens on the way home. What? The hell is a bracken? <clears throat> Moving on. They are believed to have entered the mountain area around 11 a.m. And that was the last known sighting of them alive. Their bodies were discovered two days later, after a missing persons report was filed by the concerned family members, which in effect prompted an extensive search. Eiko appeared to have been badly beaten, had broken ribs, ruptured liver, and marks on her neck that indicated strangulation as her cause of death. Also, a male's body fluid was found inside her, suggesting that she had been raped, despite her clothes being intact when her body was located. Keiko was also badly beaten, but with additional stab wounds and a kitchen knife still stuck in her chest. Her underwear and trousers were removed, hinting on sexual assault. But no traces of male body fluid were found on her, What's terrifying is that her Achilles tendons were cut through, which investigators believe happened prior to her death and speculated that the suspect wanted to prevent her from running away while he was murdering Eiko. Motherfucker! Their bags were left nearby, with all the money, documents and contents still inside. So it wasn't just a robbery gone wrong. There was, however, one chilling clue that the police found in Keiko's pocket a note written in pencil on the back of a receipt from May 21st. Quote, We're being followed. Please help. This man is a bad person. End quote. The perpetrator's genetic material found at the scene was tested, but the only result it produced was that the murderer had blood type O. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough, and no suspect was ever named. Man, the forensic testing really sucked balls in the 70s. The most they could use is what? A secret message with lemon juice over a flame? Middle school style? It was a shit show, investigators be pretty much pointing fingers all around. Hence, there's probably a bunch of retired serial killers still among us. Got that? Huh? I'll see myself out. Here's a plot twist. Five years later, in 1984, another housewife was murdered in the same area. She was stabbed to death, her body wrapped in a futon and set on fire. And this is gonna blow your mind. The police discovered that this woman was actually friends with the other two victims. And she was with them on the day of Keiko and Eiko's murder, but returned home early. Unknowingly escaping death at the time, but not for long. Blood type O was found on her body, just like with the previous victims, but was never linked to any particular suspect. The statute of limitation on these murders had passed on May 24, 1994. Are you serious, bro? Which means the case remains unsolved, and the families of these three women will never really know what happened, and who was responsible for their loved one's death. Was there a personal link between the victims? Was the perpetrator a local? He very much could have been, and if that's the case, he might still be living in that very same area to this day. There is so much more details in this case and it's definitely worth reading further about, so if you feel like torturing yourself with Japanese true crime articles like I did, I'll drop the links to my sources down below. In the meantime, stay safe out there and remember to lock your doors. And maybe don't go picking weird fern thingies in Japan. Until the next time.